everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. We are in a delectable place in Sandwich, Massachusetts. We are the Sandwich Glass Museum. Wowzer, you're going to love this one. So come along. Let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi, everybody. I'm Melinda Galland, and I am sitting in the best museum in Sandwich that's filled with gorgeous glass. And I just want to say at the beginning of this program, it has the very best gift shop around. I can vouch for that. But I am sitting here today with a wonderful person who's the new executive director, and wow, what a nice person, Mary Childs. Nice to see you, Mary. So nice to see you, Melinda. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be able to sit here in front of the kiln, kind of. It's a little warm. It's off, but it's still warm. Very warm. I don't know how they do this. <clears throat> I don't either. Okay, so Mary, how long have you been in the job? In this job, I started in mid-March, <gasps> so very few. Uh, just a few months. Just a few months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and where did you come from? Well, I was curator here at the museum oh. for about a year and a half. Uh -huh. Prior to that, I was guest curator under Dorothy Schofeld. Oh, yeah. And prior to that, I was on the board of trustees for several years. Oh, wow. So I'm with the museum in many laws. So are you trained as a curator? I have been a curator for almost 35 years. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Well, first of all, you don't look that old. <laughs> Uh, where else were you a curator? Well, I started out in Stockbridge, Mass, mm -hmm. as a gallerist. Oh my and gosh! I became a gallery director, and in the course of uh, working in the gallery world, of course, you curate exhibitions all the time. Right. Uh, my last iteration in that field was in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I worked for the Duncan McFarlane Gallery. Wow. We curated exhibitions every month year-round with wow. speakers and uh, visiting artists from all around the world. Oh, wow. That was a big job. Yes. And then you decided to come back to Massachusetts. You did. I did. Well, COVID happened. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> it I, happened to all of us. It did. Um, <laughs> my family's in the Berkshires, mm -hmm. and I was able to, the gallery closed down for a little bit. I was able to come back to the Berkshires, work remotely, mm -hmm. uh, continue to develop programming, mm -hmm. uh, and then was still a trustee here. Oh, at wow. The museum and watch as the museum gradually reopened as well. Right. Well, and you followed Katie Campbell, beloved Katie Campbell. Yes. Everybody always says, well, we love Katie. Yes. <laughs> she did some wonderful things. She, well, she it brought it in. She she did she brought it into the millennium. Yes. Quite frankly, it was kind of a an old dusty what I would call, and I've been here forty some years museum way back when, and and I think the first thing that I came in and noticed was the gift shop, and she did a great job in in reestablishing that in a new way. But wow, what you've got going on here now is sensational. I can't believe the children's exhibit is gorgeous. That's a wonderful exhibition, uh, Creatures Great and Small, and it is for artists flying in the England area. The whole exhibition is uh, an annual theme, uh -huh. so each artist has created these really whimsical, bright, adorable, uh, <laughs> intriguing uh, set of creatures. Each one, each artist has approached that in their own way. Well, the one with the bowl of candy and the little mice going into the bowl, bringing out the candy, is about the most adorable thing I've ever seen. So that artist is Katerina Weintraub, and she is from the Boston area. That work is made with a little blowtorch oh and gosh. a little pipe, and she's created these mice, the little gumdrops. It is adorable. Yeah, yeah. It is yes. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and as I said when we were, we were looking at it, you know, what was amazing to me is there was, there's a storyline in each one of those glass scenes, you yes. know, yes. so kids could have fun with parents, you know, on the car ride home. Well, so which one did you like best? Well, what do you think the story was? It could be really a fun time for the families. 
They come in, it's wonderful, watch the kids, they run right up to the glass <laughs> cases, they put their hands on it, they're looking in. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a lot of fun. Spend a lot of time with Windex, <laughs> but it's okay. Small price to pay. Small price to pay. Well, and the other exhibit just beyond it is gorgeous as well with those beautiful heron. So that is Flyover, and the artist's name is Aaron Lehman. He's uh, based in Salem, Mass, and mm -hmm. his studio is in Lowell. Oh my God. And each of those birds represents an aerial view of the water and the sandbars and the marsh grasses. You'll see the patterns on mm -hmm. the backs. So it's uh, kind of an homage to Cape Cod uh, as a place where migrating birds fly over and take time to rest and before they go. Right, right. Well, it is absolutely stunning. It's very stunning. Thank you. So, how did I? I don't remember some of the history of the Glass Museum. So, so tell me some of the history. When did it start? I mean, I know that it dealt with the, the, um, the glass factory that was here and Deming Jarvis and all of that. However, how did the museum come to be? Well, the museum is an upgrowth of the historic, the Sandwich Historical Society, ah. which started in 1907. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the Boston and Glass Society uh, factory mm -hmm. was such a big part of the development of the town of Sandwich, mm -hmm. it seemed to be an obvious way of taking the story of Sandwich and uh, you know preserving this really important part of the development of the town. Mm -hmm. So we're fortunate enough to have a really extensive collection of glass that was made here at the Boston and Sandwich Glass Factory. Um, you'll see it throughout the museum. It's arranged in chronological order for the types of glass that were being produced at different times mm -hmm. in the uh, factory's history. We also, in the beginning, um, do a little educational uh, vignettes with uh, talk about the chemistry of glass what glass is made of, you know, the real elements, the sand, the silica, where it came from, uh, the sand and silica that were used in the Boston and Sandwich glass factory came from two places. One was in the Berkshires and one was in New Jersey. Really? Because the sand here has um, many more uh, minerals that did not know that. Good for the production of uh, glass. Now, when sandwich glass was made way back when, which was in the late 1800s, correct? Well, early through late 1800s, okay. 1825 to 1888. Okay. And that's when the factory burnt down? Yes. Yeah. And um, at the time, it was just thought of as regular glass. It wasn't, I mean, now it's, some of it is priceless, I think, isn't it? Some of it is. You know, some of the rarer items or more complex items um, it's very, very deadly. Uh, but at the time, it was almost like, was it considered like Libby glass or inexpensive no, glass? It, initially, glass was a luxury item. Really? Uh, but uh, they drink out of wooden cups? Uh, in metal. Oh, in metal, of course, right. duh. <laughs> um, uh, and, because, and when glass was blown, it was expensive to produce and it right. was rare. It, with the advent of pressed glass, that's when glass became more available for the masses and um, less expensive makes of use. I see, yeah. I see. Um, do you still sell cup plates here? We still have cup plates. I yes. have to laugh. I think every woman who's lived in Sandwich more than 20 years has a plethora of cup plates. Well, it's one of those items that can be used for anything. It, it can, can be. be. Rings. Yeah, it can be. Well, mine are, by the way, stuffed away in a drawer, so I should probably get bring them out. out. I need to get yeah. them out. Well, I just saw something in the house up the street on uh, Water Street that's been redone by Circle Homes. Uh, the Thornton, Bur was it Thornton oh, Burgess? Was it Burgess? Right. Um, she took her cup plates and put them into glass as um, as a montage of all the cup plates, so it looks like stained glass. It is there, so gorgeous, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I was thinking, now how could I do that? But since I don't do anything with glass, I probably can't. I'd have to have it done, I think. 
There are a lot of great artists in San There Francisco. are, there are. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So where is the museum now? Where do you see the future? Where do you see going? And, and uh, I know, wait, didn't you just get a big grant? We did. We were uh, recipients of the Massachusetts Cultural Council Matching Funds Grant. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. We have a lot of places we could use that money, mm -hmm. um, but it is going for, uh, first of all, for facilities upgrades. Excellent. We have a beautiful old building, needs a lot of tending to. Right. Um, we're fortunate to get this grant because it will enable us to then increase our programming and do uh, lots of different things that we haven't been able to do. But first we have to take care of the bones. Of oh, sure, the structure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. So tell me, how does the grant work? Yeah. Well, it's matching funds. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have at least $140,000 in grant money that we have to match. Mm -hmm. And if anyone would like to donate towards that. You'll uh, take anything. We'll take anything <laughs> and everything. And every penny is greatly appreciated. Sure. Uh, you can do it online by going to our website, uh, sandwichglassmuseum.org and go to the donate page nice. and donate right online. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank make you. it easy. And every donation that you make is matched, so it's double your donation. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, and you know, it's hard for people on the Cape, nonprofits on the Cape, to get that money, to be honest with you. It's rare that it comes this direction, so you're very fortunate that they saw, you know, such a wonderful thing going on here that they should help you with it. Well, thank you. I think you're not only helping the Sandwich Glass Museum, but we are dedicated to strengthening the whole community, mm -hmm. um, the cultural community and arts community. Mm -hmm. So uh, we feel that for each entity that is strengthened, it strengthens all of us. So, you know, we feel that um, not only are we benefiting from our upgrades, mm -hmm. but it will really uh, help to strengthen the tourism community, the economic community, the artistic community. Oh, wonderful. Sandwich. Yeah, sure. Well, and let's face it, when people come to Sandwich, they go to Heritage, they come here, they may go down to the Nye House, they may have lunch at the Daniel Webster or down at Fisherman's View, you know, but they're, and the, they'll go to the various artists and shops that are on Main Street and down 6A. So you're right, if there's another reason for people to come here because this is such a fabulous place, that's a good thing. Well, we want them to come and linger, you know, not just come on their way to other places. Sure. You know, so that's part of, part of the museum's mission is not just for us, but for the all community. Sure, sure, that makes sense. Well, you're in the Glastown Cultural District, yes? We are. Yes, a real, a tight-knit area of wonderful, wonderful buildings and, and history here, for sure. It's nice being across from the, what I'm going to call the old Sandwich Town Hall. The, the uh, selectmen will shoot me for saying that. <laughs> they don't like to think of it as the old Sandwich Town Hall, but that's what it is because they have the new one. But um, that must be a great, it's a great vehicle to use as a, as a landmark for you. <laughs> Iconic. Landmark. Yeah. So, you know, it really anchors this little part of town. It sure does. It sure does. It's exciting what's going on. Sure. So tell me, what else? I, I interrupted you when I asked you your vision. So what, what where are you going from here? What do you what do you got planned? We have lots of plans. That's good. And you know, the first the first part of the vision is to help educate people about the connection between historic glass and contemporary glass. And that's why uh, the exhibits that you mentioned earlier are so important. The techniques that are used in contemporary glass are the same techniques that were used by the artisans in the Boston and Sandwich glass. Really? Same basic formulas, same techniques, but you know, you're using the contemporary culture and the contemporary way of living and interpreting glass in a different way. So the first thing we want to try to help people understand is that glass is a living art form. When the artisans were working in the glass factory, they were, you know, they were real people 
creating work just like the artists today. They were in there with their medium, you know, trying to figure out how to make beautiful mm -hmm. sighting objects. And so there's a relationship between that and what is happening today in the contemporary glass world. So that's the first part of our vision. Um, the sec one of the ways of doing that is to bring in guest artists mm -hmm. to speak. And so with each exhibition opening, we've had these artists speaking, and that's always really exciting to sure. hear about how they do things. Um, we are also starting our lecture series in the fall. Um, Elizabeth Friend is coming, uh, Jim Coogan, uh, some other writers. Yeah, we all here in town love Jim Coogan. Well, he's they're, they're all <laughs> wonderful. Um, but also we were just contacted by a professor in California who was writing about one of our historical uh, oh, hey. characters whose collections we have. Oh, my. Was, uh, let's see. She was one of the first women to navigate a whaling ship back from the Pacific when her husband died. Yeah. And so I was just, I just received a call from a professor in California who was writing a book about women who do extraordinary things. Wow. She's willing to come in September and um, speak as well. Oh, that's so wonderful. It will. Well, you have a beautiful auditorium here. It's wonderful. It is a beautiful auditorium. So starting programming like this, we also have started our glass experience. Oh, please tell me about that. Well, right behind us right. is the replica, replica of a glass furnace as it would have been seen in the factory. Mm -hmm. So three nights a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you can come and make your own paperweight with our... our I think that is so cool. Yeah. That is so much fun. So you work with a real glass artist, the, the, the resident glass artist, I assume? Yes. And, and what does he have or she have you do? Well, first he walks you through all the steps of making a paperweight to make sure you're safe and comfortable with the space, with your tools. And then you just you do it. You dip your rod in the in the glass, uh, pull it pull it out with a blob of glass on the end. It's all hot or siry, ready for you wow. to make your paperweight. And he walks you through the steps. He does. Oh my gosh. So how many people can you do it at he or she? So how many do you do at a time here? Just two at a time. Unfortunately, it's kind of small. Right. Um, but your friends and family can come and watch. Right. And we are going to expand that to do groups. Still two at a time. But after that, you'll be able to have a glass of wine, maybe get a tour of the museum. Yeah, don't have the wine before. No. <laughs> you have to do the ones first. <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah. And you can register for that online as well. And so has it been popular? We're booked all the way into September. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, it'd be a great gift for somebody, too. It is. Uh, we've had a lot of lot of mothers and daughters, mm -hmm. um, families, you know, that come together to do things when they're visiting here on the Cape. Now, one other thing that we do do with children is we use this, this press just behind this uh -huh. empty glass press. And you can press a sun catcher on that. So that's easier for us when we're children. Yeah. Oh, how fun. So you have a lot of things for people to do when they come in. It's just not a static display. Well, museums are actually, you know, living, breathing entities. And it needs to be thought of as, as a place to uh, archive dead objects. But what we're trying to tell people is that the past informs who we are now. Sure. And it's, it's a story that is still evolving. So that's, you know, that's what a museum should be used for, is to get that story out, where we came from, who we are, where we're going. Oh, that's a wonderful, that's wonderful. Um, it's funny because I worked for Heritage for a very, sh well, for a year and a half, actually, and um, a long time, a long time ago. And... Um, when I was going through orientation, one of the things they said it was Mr. Lily, Mr. Lily's stuff. <laughs> I was the, his stuff, which was true. But obviously, through the years, they had curated so many more items into the collection, the cars, et cetera. So um, that's funny. But you're right. It is. It's, it's, 
you don't know the future until you look at the past and you'll make the same mistakes again, as we can see. Um, but that is amazing. That's, that's a wonderful philosophy. Is that the vision of the, of the uh, museum? It's the vision of the museum. And I think, I think museums in general are trying to incorporate that into their messages now. Um, it's, it's just really important to understand, especially as being part of the historical society too, you know, where we fit into the history of the town <laughs> and Cape Cod. Sure. Wow. Sure. Uh, but I had no idea they didn't use the sand from here. I really didn't know that. Well, you know, the, as I said, the different minerals right, right. made different effects. And, and uh, you know, it has to be kind of pure. Sure. Or you don't know what's... But it's it's just funny to me. They bring it up from New Jersey. And the Berkshires. And the Berkshires. But the Berkshires I could see, but New Jersey just seems like an odd place. I don't think of New Jersey as a place of fine sand, but I guess it is. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. It is funny. And then, of course, they have to bring in minerals for the colors from oh, sure. the world. Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. So we have a lot of glass artists here in town, which is quite amazing. Really lucky, and it's kind of interesting that the glass story continues in Sandwich with these artists. Mm -hmm. We have David McDermott, Michael Lagyar. Mm -hmm. um, Yukimi. And Yukimi. Yeah. Uh, Yes, at the McDermott Studios. Right, right. And you have beautiful glass out front in the parking lot. That's Bill Mayer. And he is in the area. I'm not sure exactly which town he's mm -hmm. in. But he's from the area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that is the glass garden. Yes, it's beautiful. And here he adds a few pieces. It's really lovely. Yeah, and it's great. And that's a great example of how to use very traditional techniques to do something really kind of innovative and fresh. Sure. Well, now, um, you've heard of, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Chihuly glass? Ch Chihuly glass. Yeah. Right. And you'll see those giant, you know, ca uh, chandeliers and big, huge pieces that are so colorful and bright and whatever. So Deal's work is a good example of somebody that um, took, traditional like, techniques mm -hmm. and created a whole different movement and vision with contemporary glass. He actually uh, won a Fulbright and went to Murano. Oh, wow. And studied under the Italian maestros. Yeah. And then came back and uh, a lot of a lot of the, the rims around his his pieces that is an Italian technique. Right. Um, the cane work that he has, and then he also hired uh, to work with his studio some Italian ma maestros as well. But again, so took the very traditional knowledge of class, really uh, created the whole new movement. And wow. So do you see the, the Sandwich Glass Museum as um, promoting both contemporary glass and traditional glass? Uh, yes, we, we do that in relationship to each other. I see. I think that's the important thing. Sure. The sure. important piece of this is that the glass factory uh, really supported artisans. And part of our mission in we, by exhibiting contemporary glass is to continue that tradition and support local artisans and artists. Sure. So, uh, so when you say um, the glass factory itself, there were a lot of, of immigrants that worked at the glass factory. Were they all Italian? Were they Portuguese? Were they French? It's an interesting story that I would really like to do more exhibits around. Um, I'm looking, and you don't have to look, but I'm looking at a picture of a bunch of women sitting on a, on a, um, on chairs. And can you... Um, I mean, were those typical of the workers? Well, in the factory itself, it was mostly male mm -hmm. population, but the women uh, did a lot of supportive work surrounding the actual production of mm -hmm. the glass. And one of the reasons that uh, Deming Jarvis uh, used this location is he knew that there would be a large immigrant population wow. in the Boston area. So they would come down. 
Right. Now, um, they also imported skilled artists from Europe for different things, uh, uh, for different types of tech ones. Um, as you go through the museum, you'll see there's an area where uh, there are a lot of lampshades that are hand-painted. Mm -hmm. Those artists typically came from uh, Europe, uh, England, and Scotland. There's a gentleman named Lutz who um, developed a, a technique of wrapping glass, highly sought after the Lutz glass, and he was from Austria. Wow. Um, a lot of the engravers mm -hmm. uh, were from from the British Isles. And so those workers were imported for their skill. They were paid very, very well. Wow. How as well. I was going to say the big houses here are on in Sandwich around Main Street and down towards the water, towards the, um, gla uh, the Sandwich Boardwalk, a lot of those homes I know were homes at the time of the, of the uh, glass factory. Yeah, the uh, factory actually built housing for their work. Oh, my God. Much of Wait, so those homes wait were about, they thought they had forethought they that if you need workers, you need housing? What a thought process. <laughs> Very good care of their people. That's a great thing. If somebody was widowed, mm -hmm. they uh, had their housing and uh, food and economic stipends for the rest of their life. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you are a wealth of knowledge, for sure, and so fun to talk to. Can we come back sometime? Please come back. Okay. We'd love to come have you come back for every uh, exhibit and our talks, <laughs> of course. But uh, I'm going to look into this. That's what I want to look into doing. Make a special time. <laughs> okay. And we about to say also that if there is a, a special event that people want to schedule a last experience for. Oh, they can do that. We can yeah. try to accommodate that. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mary Childs, what a delightful person. And does she know her stuff about glass? I'm telling you. And they're doing a matching funding program here through the Mass Cultural Council. Go online, sandwichglassmuseum.org, and look for how you can give. It doesn't matter how much you give. It's that you're a part of the community giving. So thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations.